And in grad school, I did my first microarray experiment. Up until that point, I've been looking at one gene at a time. And all of a sudden, I could look at every gene in the genome at the same time. And it blew my, it blew my mind. And I wanted to do that more. And I really got fascinated by what's on the fringes. You know, I'm an explorer by nature, and so trying to figure out what are the limits of life and can we push our knowledge in terms of what can sustain life. As I moved along, I started getting more and more interested in this third domain of life, the archaea. A lot of the archaea model organisms are also extremophiles that live in extreme conditions from boiling temperatures to high pressure, deep sea vents. So I work on organisms that live in high salt and saturated salt, places like the Dead Sea and the Great Salt Lake. We're more interested in the molecular mechanisms that these organisms use to withstand those extremes. We've been able to uh, not only map those networks, but also dynamically, how are they responding to the environment? So we're gonna need the cluster to not only to make those models, but also to compare between the models. We've also started um, generating a lot more next generation sequencing data to try to figure out how the networks are functioning. And we're going to need the cluster because we're generating a lot of it at a time, so parallelizing the pipelines will need the cluster for.